this video is going to cover uh, related rates and related rates of our queues. So let's start with an overview. Uh, the basic idea behind related rates is that we're taking uh, some scenario represented by an equation and we're differentiating that equation with respect to time. Um, and then we get what's called a related rates formula, which we can then use to answer different questions about a given scenario. So they're, they're very application heavy. So some important things we want to know how to do to solve these types of FRQs. The most important thing is setting up the related rates scenario. So there's going to be a lot of different scenarios we're going to see being able to set up the equations that represent each scenario is uh, is the first thing you know to do to solve you need to know to do to solve these questions and then once you do that we're going to be differentiating I'll say differentiate with respect to time uh, and I do want to go through just a very quick example. So let's say we have the area of a circle, pi r squared. If I want to find the rate of change of the area of the circle um, as a function of time, I'm going to differentiate this equation with respect to time. And what that's going to look like is dA dt is equal to, we're going to treat r as the variable, pi is going to be a constant, so 2 pi r dr dt. Okay, and this will give us the rate of change of the area of the circle with respect to not only the radius, but the rate of change of the radius with respect to time. Um, and so the last thing we want to know to do that shows up for these types of questions is the proper use of the product rule. and the quotient rule. Each of these two rules, they do show up um, in these questions, so it's important that you guys remember those rules from differentiation. Okay, so let's start with our first FRQ. Okay, here we have a cylinder. It uh, has a diameter of two feet, and it's a, a cylinder that collects rainwater. Water is draining out through the bottom of this cylinder, and the rate of change of the height in the water with respect to time is given by this equation right here. So the rate of change of the height is a function of the height itself, where the height's going to be in feet. Um, it gives it also gives us the volume of the cylinder. Okay, so we're going to start by finding the rate of change of the volume of the water with respect to time when the height is four feet. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is recognize kind of what we're looking for. We're looking for d, uh, dv dt when the height h is equal to 1. And so let's start with the formula for the volume of the cylinder. Um, and the idea here is we're going to go from this to a formula for dv dt because dv dt represents the, the rate of change of the volume. Okay. Recognize for this question here, the radius is going to be a constant value. So the radius is not changing, which makes this question a lot easier. Um, the next question you're going to see, the radius will be changing, so that's going to make it a little bit harder. But the radius is going to be, uh, can be found by taking the diameter here and just dividing it by 2. So r is equal to 1. Okay. So what we're going to do is let's rewrite this. Um, but before we do that, let's take the derivative, okay? So r is going to be constant, so we're going to take the derivative of this, treating r as a constant, and then h as our variable. So pi r squared, that's going to stay the same because r is constant, and then the derivative of h with respect to time is dh dt. Well, dh dt we know is one-tenth 
times the square root of h. And so all we're going to do now is uh, plug this, that expression in here for h. Okay, and so this is a formula that represents the rate of change of the volume as a function of the changing height h. Okay, so now let's plug in our r value, which is 1. And then the h value, we want to evaluate the rate of change of the volume at. That's going to be 4. And that's given to us over here. So h is equal to uh, 4. Okay. So let's plug these values in and see what we get. So dv dt is equal to pi times the radius squared times negative one tenth square root of four. Okay, and let's simplify this. So dv dt is equal to, uh, well, this square root of four becomes two. And so we get negative two pi over five, or sorry, over 10, I'm getting ahead of myself, which is negative pi over five. Um, and the units here are going to be feet cubed per second. Okay, and that's the answer for letter A. Okay, letter B. Once, uh, when the height is three feet, so three feet, the rate of change of the height with respect to time, let's determine whether or not it's increasing or decreasing. Okay, so we know the formula that represents um, the height of the water as it's changing is this right here. If I want to determine whether or not this rate of change is increasing or decreasing with respect to time, what I'm going to need to do here is identify the second derivative, okay, and determine the sign of the second derivative. Because if the second derivative is positive, then the rate of change of the height is going to be increasing. If the second derivative is negative, then the rate of change of the height is going to be decreasing. Okay, so it's sort of like identifying when a function, any function is increasing or decreasing. We use the sign of the, uh, the first derivative. Okay, but the tricky part about this is the original function we're given is the derivative itself, um, so we're going to be finding the second derivative. Okay, so what that means is we need to take the second derivative. And to do that, we're going to take the derivative of this function one time. So if dhdt is equal to this statement, well, we can rewrite it as this. So the second derivative with respect to time of h is going to be equal to the 1 half will come down, so negative 1 over 20 h raised to the negative 1 half. Um, and then because of the chain rule, we're going to multiply this by dh dt because we are taking the derivative with respect to time. Well, we know what dh dt is. Uh, dh dt is represented right here. And so let's plug this in here. So the second derivative of h with respect to time is going to be equal to negative 1 20th times h to the negative 1 half times dh dt, which we're going to write as, um, I'll write it like this. So instead of using this one here, just to make it easier, I'll use this. Okay, and the reason why we're going to do that is it makes the simplification a little bit easier. Uh, when we're simplifying this, notice we're going to add the exponents here. Well, negative 1 half plus 1 half is 0. So that just becomes h to the 0, which is equal to 1. So those terms will go away. And so the, the value of the second derivative is going to be negative 1 20th times negative 10, which is positive 1 over 200. Um, and so because the value of the second derivative is positive, then the value of the first derivative is going to be increasing. And so we say the rate of change, the rate 
of change is increasing. It's really the rate of change of the height is increasing at h equals 3. Well, it actually doesn't even matter that um, h equals 3 because it, the value of h won't affect the value of the second derivative. But if there was an h in here, what you'd do is you'd plug in h equals 3. Um, so that we say the rate of change is increasing at h equals 3 because the value of the second derivative is greater than 0. It's positive. Okay, and that's going to be um, the answer for this one. Okay, uh, last one, letter C. I'll box this in. So letter C, uh, once we're going to do, this looks like a differential equation question. It's a separation of variables. Um, so at t equals 0, the height is uh, 5 feet. So letter C. So at t equals 0, h is equal to 5. We're going to find, we're going to use this as an initial condition to solve this function for h. So this is a differential equation, which we're going to use to solve for h. It's a separable differential equation. Um, so we're going to use separation of variables, integrate both sides, use the initial condition right here to find a constant, c. And then uh, our ultimate answer will be a function h in terms of t. So we're, what we're going to do here is separate the variables. I'm going to bring the h over to the um, to one side and the t's over to another side, to the right-hand side. We'll, we'll keep the negative one-tenth on the right-hand side, though. So let's write it like this. dh dt is equal to h to the one-half. Uh, times negative one-tenth. Okay, and what I'll do is I'll divide by h to the one-half. So this becomes h to the negative one-half dh equals, and I'll multiply by dt on both sides. Negative one-tenth times dt. Now let's integrate these two terms. So h to the negative one-half, that becomes t, or sorry, 2 h to the positive one-half equals negative t over 10 plus c. And now we're going to use the initial condition here. So let's plug in uh, plug in 5 for h and then 0 for t. So 2 times the square root of 5 is equal to 0 plus c. So c is equal to 2 root 5. And now we're going to take this, plug it back in here, and rewrite our equation so it is no longer in terms of the constant c. So instead of writing c, let's write plus 2 root 5. Okay, now we need to solve this for h. So I'm going to divide by 2 on both sides. So h to the 1 half, where the square root of h is equal to negative 10 over 20 plus the square root of 5. Okay, and then if we want to undo x, h to the 1 half or the square root of h, I'm just going to square both sides now. So now h is equal to, I'll write it like this, h of t is equal to negative t over 20 plus the square root of 5. And we're going to square that. And that is the solution to this separable differential equation here. And let's wrap up the video by going through FRQ number 2. So another related rates question, this time instead of a cylinder we have a cone. Um, this one's going to be a little bit trickier, though, because the, the radius is not going to be a constant value. It's actually going to be changing. Um, and so that's going to make the differentiation a little bit more challenging. Okay, So here we have a cone, and it looks like there's some water in the cone, and there's water evaporating. Um, the water's evaporating in the cone, and it's evaporating at this rate right here. Okay. So D, this is equal to dh dt. And they also give us the volume of a cone, which is nice. I do not remember that. So if we want to find the volume v of water in the container when h is equal to 5. Okay, 
So we know the formula for the, I'll do it over here on the right. We know the formula for the volume. Well, they gave that to us is one third pi r squared times h. Okay, the trick here for these types of questions um, is recognizing the relationship between r and h. Um, there's going to be a proportionality between r and h. And that proportionality can be found by, the, by looking at this figure over here. So if the diameter is 10, well then the radius is going to be 5. And so the ratio of the radius to the height is going to be the ratio of 5 to 10. Um, and that's really the key to solving this question. Being able to recognize this, this proportion, proportionality, um, or this ratio, will be true no matter what the values of r and h are. Um, and so to solve this, let's um, solve this first question. Let's rewrite the, uh, the volume equation up here at the top. So we know that r over h is going to be 1 half. Um, the r value is going to be h over 2. Okay, so if the height is 5 for this first question, then the radius is 5 over 2. And so the volume when the height is 5 is pi times 5 over 2 squared times 5. Okay, let's just simplify this. So this becomes 25 um, over 4 times 5. Well, it's 125 over 4 times 1 third is 125 over 12 pi uh, centimeters cubed for this volume. Okay. So find the rate of change of the volume uh, with respect to time when h equals 5. This is where the derivative is going to come in handy. This proportionality is important because if we're basically going to use this right here to rewrite the volume equation in terms of one variable rather than in terms of two variables. Because if it's in terms of one variable, then we can avoid using like the product rule um, to take the derivative. So if the volume is equal to one third pi r squared times h, well, we know the radius is equal to h over two. So we can plug in h over two for r. And now let's rewrite this just in terms of h. So this is h squared over 4 times h. Uh, and so the volume of this cone with uh, just in terms of h is going to be equal to 1 12th times pi h cubed. Now we're in a position where we're going to take the derivative. So dv dt is equal to, well, the 3 will come down and become 1 4th h times uh, 1 fourth pi times h squared times dh dt. Okay, we want to evaluate what the rate of change of the volume is when the height is equal to 5. And dh dt is actually given to us right here. We are given dh dt, so we're going to plug in negative 3 over 10 in here. Okay, let's simplify this. Well, this will give us 25 times negative 3 is negative 75 over 40 times pi, which will simplify to negative 15 pi over uh, 8 centimeters cubed in its per hour. And so this is the rate of change of the volume of the cone. It should be negative because the volume is decreasing when the height of the cone is uh, 5 centimeters. Okay, and then lastly, let's go through the, uh, the last question here. So we're going to show that the rate of change of the volume um, is directly proportional to the exposed surface area of the water. So from letter B, this one's a little bit different. From letter B, we know the volume is going to be equal to 1 12th times pi uh, h cubed. 
that comes directly from over here. Well, because of that, we already calculated this. dv dt is equal to 1 fourth pi h squared times dh dt. This, if the exposed surface area of the water is going to be the, the area just on the top here. So it's the area of that circle in green. Um, and that area is going to be equal to pi r squared. Well, r we know is equal to pi times h over 2 squared from right here. And so the area is equal to 1 fourth pi h squared. And this is the formula for the area, um, the exposed surface area of the water, just as a function of h and not r. Well, notice here that this expression or these terms are equivalent to the area. So dv dt is equal to the area times what's called a constant of proportionality. Constant of proportionality. Okay, and what this means is that the rate of change of the volume um, is proportional to the area. As the area gets larger, the rate of change of the volume will get larger. The way we get from the area to the rate of change of the volume is we multiply it by this constant of proportionality right here. <clears throat> and the last part of this question wants us to determine what that value is. Well, notice it's just going to be dh dt. So the constant of proportionality is the rate of change of the height. So dv dt is equal to a times dh dt because k is going to be equal to dh dt. And we know this is equal to um, negative 3 over 10. And that's the answer for letter C. Okay, that wraps up, that wraps up this video uh, for related rates. Let's wrap up the lesson by going through number 3 here on the one note.